This program proudly brought to you by Cabots, who are also proud to bring you beautiful timber decking, outdoor furniture. Burke and welcome to Burke's Backyard. Well, I honestly believe we have everything you could ever want for every member of the family on tonight's show. For instance, is someone a bit handy, like those floor cubes, you know, the square poofs or whatever they are? Well, Rita Hill is going to look at how you make those, and they're some of the new beanbag, I suppose. Jeff Chance, for those of you that want to do a bit of cooking, he's looking at oven roasted tomatoes. Absolutely glorious, this particular recipe, and save your money. We're going to road test the cockatiel, one of the world's best pets that you can have, particularly as a bird. Scotty Cam from Backyard Blitz is looking at grinders. Wonderful things, but they can be dangerous. And our celebrity gardeners tonight are Sister to Sister, or S2S, which is Christine and Sharon Muscat. She's very messy. Oh, really? You're messy. I told you I'd get picked up. I have to clean her room. I do the bed. She's messy. She never does the garden. She never does the laundry. I do the bed. She's messy. She never does the garden. Never does anything. She's messy. How do you like things Greek style? If you do, this garden coming up is really going to appeal to you. It was created for a guy by the name of Jeff Bogan, and obviously this is just the look he wanted. Jeff, I take it at some point you decided you wanted the, the Greek fantasy. Yes, um, we spent a couple of um, trips to Skiathos in the Greek islands, really loved the atmosphere. And uh, we were sitting in a Greek taverna at one stage, and I said to my family, wouldn't it be terrific if we had a backyard that looked just like this so we could capture the feeling of the Greek island all the time? What did the garden look like originally? Well, it was pretty, pretty ugly, a typical sort of 70s effort, really. It's uh, quarry tiles, lots of mission brown, the furniture was brown, um, paling fences falling down. It was not a place that we really wanted to spend any time in, so we didn't really spend a lot of time. I guess at the time it wasn't really a great priority. And the, clearly that Mediterranean blue colour is pretty much a giveaway of the sort of Greek area. Absolutely, and, and the whites of the, of the walls, when we first started, we painted them the typical dead white, but it, it was just too reflective, yeah. uh, too bright, so we had to soften that with an off-white. The, the fountain here, which um, I'm fairly certain is called a Kronos, it's actually been carved out of just um, Sydney sandstone, so putting our own little flavour on, on that. The shade structure, it's quite common in a lot of courtyards in Greece to, to build something that's fairly lightweight, just to, to act, uh, act as a structure or a support for the the climate to get up and over. And horticulturally, you've hit the hat trick here with the olive tree, the grapevine, and the geraniums or pelagoniums. Yes, absolutely, yeah. What's been your experience since you got your backyard back? Well, the first thing, obviously, is we're able to use it as a, basically as an extension of the house. Um, you know, it's sort of colour scheme and the um, house sort of extends into the backyard. So what we find now is we've actually got a usable room where we would spend a lot of our time, particularly during summer weather, out here eating and doing a lot of entertaining. It's important in every um, garden to, to have seating to enjoy the area and particularly in a courtyard to, to build that in if you can. If you can tuck the seating into a corner mm -hmm. like we have here and protected from the sun, uh, then it makes it a lot more comfortable. What's behind this door? It's actually the laundry in the garage, John. We found that when the, the clients are having parties and they wanted to 
uh, entertain and, and use the garage as the, the storage for the drinks and, and excess supplies, then uh, we came in here and it was just a, a blank wall with ugly concrete. So we carried the, carried the uh, theme through and so created a bit of an illusion with the mirror. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. It almost looks like it goes on forever. It does exactly that and it and does bounce back into the, to the other mirror beyond. So it can be quite confusing. That's trying to give the, you know, give the illusion that uh, the area is a lot larger than it, than it appears. Oh, that's wonderful! Isn't yeah. It? Oh, and you got your garden hose. So we've got the garden hose, we've got the pump for the drainage, and we've got the hot water system here. Right. So um, it's quite neatly concealed. Yes. It's a very good lesson this for a lot of people that when you've got an ugly bit or a functional bit, it, it can be covered up in such a way that you'd never know. Yeah, exactly. The garden lighting looks as if it'd be pretty effective. It is. Um, it creates a really ter terrific atmosphere during the evening. Yeah. Um, so we've got sort of lighting all through and the mm. fountain lights up. Oh, um, right. creates a really great effect. Some people might find it a little bit over the top, but um, I mean, to us it captured everything that we really wanted you know, in a backyard and we certainly haven't got sick of it. We certainly, every time we come out here, we You're on get the pleasure. Well, it gets exactly right. We get the pleasure of being out here and sort of soaking it up and we're on holidays. When we return, we'll road test one of the most beautiful birds in the world, the cockatiel, and look at oven roasted tomatoes. We're watching Burke's backyard. It's now time for Jeff Jance, and he's looking at a really delicious but very, very simple thing to do with tomatoes. Now, we've all been to that fantastic restaurant or that special little deli where they have oven roasted tomatoes. They're great, aren't they? They must be difficult to make. Have you seen the prices they charge? Well, they're not. They're so simple. I'll show you how. I'm using some Roma tomatoes. They really concentrate their flavour when they're cooked. What you do is you cut the top off and then split them lengthways and throw them into a glass bowl. The flavour I'm choosing this time is rosemary, fresh rosemary. Pull off those little fonds, chop them up roughly, and then smear them a little bit to release their flavour. Add those to the tomatoes. Now some garlic. Well, this is a large clove. I never go into the kitchen without my cloves. Chop it up nice and finely. Throw that onto the tomatoes as well. Time for the salt. A generous amount, about a teaspoon for this quantity. A little bit of sugar always helps, and I've got some freshly cracked black pepper. A touch of vinegar, about a tablespoon, and then some extra virgin olive oil. Really good quality, you must have it. Now give all of this a mix. You want the tomato to get a little bit of everything. Use your hands, nice clean hands, well washed. Because we then need to place them into a baking tray. I've got some cooking paper there so the sugars don't burn onto the tomatoes. Once that's all in, don't waste these juices. Just pour them over the top of each of the tomatoes. The oven, by the way, has been set at 165 degrees. In we go. And we're roasting these for roughly 30 to 35 minutes, depending on the size of the tomato. They should just start to curl up the edge. And that's when I like their flavor. After about half an hour, take them out of the oven and when they're cool enough to handle, flip them over and remove their skin. Let them cool, then put them aside onto a plate with their wonderful juices. And this flavour here is absolutely outstanding on its own. However, I'd like to show you a quick salad. It goes a bit like this. Take some vinegar, balsamic, and some olive oil. Good quality of both, by the way. And give this a really good toss so all the leaves are completely coated. Now add some grilled bread and some broken up feta cheese. Toss that briefly and along come our heroes, the oven roasted tomatoes. Scatter those over the top. And finally, just a sprinkle of salt and freshly cracked black pepper. Wow, oven roasted tomatoes. What a great Italian summer feast. Now promise me you'll make that one because it is absolutely fantastic recipe and so simple. And of course the details are in the brand new edition of the Burke's Backyard magazine, the April edition. Now I must say for all of those of you who like desserts, there's the Decadent Desserts book which is attached to the April issue, has the most 
fabulous recipes from Jeff Jans and Elise Pascoe and Peter Valder and, and others. It really is a wonderful little booklet. If you like desserts and you're getting serious about your desserts, this is the way to go. Also, Jamie Jury has got some of the details about the wonderful new materials that are available these days for gardens. Gee, they're good. They're so much better than they ever were. And we're going to look at Eastern Spine Bills with Graham Pizzi and, and lots, lots more. Anyway, fabulous new edition out right now. But now it's time for tonight's road test. And this really is one of the sweetest animals that the Almighty ever put breath into. The cockatiel. They are really charming little pets. I don't care for walking downtown. Crazy auto car gonna mow me down. Look at all the people like cows in a herd. Well, I like birds. What's the background story of the cockatiel? Well, our beautiful native bird of Australia, yes. And they've been classified as, as what is it, the world's smallest cockatoo. Yes, I think they're, they're so popular now, I think they've, they've um, become more popular than the budgie. Why do you think they're growing in popularity so much? I think because they, they're a friendly bird and I think people like the idea that they can handle them. And they're not a frail bird. I think they're pretty, pretty tough in all. Mm. And uh, I think that's why people, and the mere fact that they can teach them to whistle mm. and the talking aspect of it. But it's not all that long ago that <laughs> they were sort of grey and white and that was it. That's right, With yes. a bit of yellow on yes. them, but basically that yes. was it. Yes. And then in recent years, the mutations have just yeah. exploded. Oh, look. We go from there, we get the, um, the pied. So the pied, what just has areas essentially where there's no grey? That's right, yes. Can you get some that's that are right. all that's yellow? Right. Yes, you can. You can get your clear pied. A clear pied. Yes. So that's one clear big pied. pied spot all over the whole bird. Yes. Yes. Well, he's basically a clear pied. He's just all white. But you can also get one of those yellowy birds that's not a pied. That's right, yes. We're going to the Latino. Mm. But the main thing with the Latino, you've got to have that nice full head. There's also a variety without the yellow and the orange? That's right, yes. We come to the white face. Again, you can get the white face in, in all the mutations. Yes. And I the, presume uh, when you combine the white face with the Lutino, right. you get the Albino. That's right. Beautiful, pure white bird. I must admit, I love the whites. Because I like birds. Are any of the different colours better or worse pets? No, not really. Although I sometimes have felt in the hand rearing that I have done that maybe the cinnamon seems to be more of a, a plastic type bird. Again, you get when you're feeding, you notice they have different personalities, yeah. and um, I think some just make better better pets than, than others. Any particular tips to people about caring for them? Things of avoiding disease or other management things are important. I find, I think diet, I really think diet plays a big part mm. and I am particular with my water. I think water sometimes causes a lot of, a lot of disease. Uh, you, you've got to make sure that you don't have dirty water there. And I like crockery utensils to put the water in and they're easier to wash out and you don't get any algae or anything in them like that. Why would you say to anyone that they should no. consider having one of these as a pet? I find they're so rewarding, Don. I, I love to get in my aviaries and they become so friendly and they get on your shoulder. I think again, if you're getting a, uh, looking for a pet, you're better off to get the, the spoon-fed baby or hand-reared and he seems to bond more to the human. So easy to tame and uh, the talking, so easy to talk and mimic whistling. Great mimics. Rita Hill looks at making floor cubes, and Graham Quirk, our scientist, is back. Birds. 
Well, you're watching Burke's Backyard. Now, you're all comfortable at home. Maybe you'd be more comfortable if you could put your feet up. Well, look, reach them out. I'll grab them for, and I can't quite reach. I'll tell you what, Rita Hill has a fantastic idea that you can put your feet on while you're trying to get comfortable. Are you a lounge hog? Well, I've got just the thing for you. I call it a floor cube. You can put your feet on it, you can sit on it, you can rest a tray on it, and it's much smarter looking than a bean bag and super easy to make. Choose a nice sturdy fabric. There's some great ones to choose from at the moment, the fake fur, leathers and suede, and then all you'll need is a nice thick piece of Velcro. If you're uncomfortable about the Velcro with small children, use a zip. I've used some templates to keep things even, a 50 centimetre square and a 50 by 35 centimetre rectangle. Cut out five squares and two rectangles for the base. Double sew each seam for strength until the four side panels form an open box. Pin the top section onto the sides and sew two edges at a time. It's a good idea to overstitch the corners for a perfect seal. Pin a strip of Velcro to the folded edge of your rectangle and sprinkle with some talcum powder. The reason for the powder is this final stuff really sticks under the sewing machine and the powder helps it slide through. To accurately place the second strip of Velcro, lay the two rectangles on the template. Mark the position, pin the Velcro, fold the seam and with a sprinkle of powder you're ready to sew. Velcro the pieces together on the template to form the last panel, then pin and stitch it in place. Sew over the Velcro a couple of times for extra strength, then turn it the right way out and you're ready for the beans. Now for the hard part. These beans have got a life of their own, so it's a lot easier if you've got some help. I've got my mum. Hello. And the best place for this is the tub, so let's get going. These are a really handy piece of do-it-yourself furniture and the kids are going to love them. Thanks a lot, Rita. They look good, didn't they? By the way, if you want the details, of course, in the April edition, the new edition of the Burke's Backyard magazine. Now, for those people that wrote in in relation to last week's program, Outraged by our Chief Scientific Researcher, Graham Quirk, with those segments he did, we would like to apologise for them and uh, undertake that we, we won't do anything more like that ever again. People spend millions of dollars a year on moisturiser, and you know what it puts back into your skin? Water. Nothing else but water. And the oily bits, they just stop more water evaporating. That's all. There are a lot of really lovely buildings being built right around Australia at the moment, but often there's a great challenge to them in that when you come down to ground level, often the landscaping is not quite up to the standard of the building, and, and a lot of buildings also need extensive softening. And here is a classic example of getting it right. The main plant along this wall here is this thing, a thing called German ivy, Senechio macroglossus, which grows in most areas of Australia other than the real cold mountains and things. But notice how well the green and this sort of creamy yellow mix with this shade. They really do work well. There's also some ivy geraniums here, which I suppose you could call a bit of fun. And as you look along this wall, you know, it's just the softening. See how it cascades down? The wall itself, of necessity, is sort of square and a little bit hard, which is fine. But with the, something spilling over it like that looks really good. Up along the top here, which is also very much like the wall, it's geometric, is a maria hedge. Perfume, white flowers, and maria really is a great plant. So this whole planting, I think, is very impressive. But believe it or not, from here on in, it, it does get better. Down here is perhaps the best bit of the lot. As I'm walking past, notice the blue garage door and the pink ivy geraniums. Rather nice. I suppose you could describe this as one of the classic examples of effortless landscaping. Just some mixed blue and white agapanthus here, which again go nicely with all the colours. Then look at this. Now, you might say that's a ground cover. Well, here it is. But this is the Chinese star jasmine. Now, that's a climber. It's something that most people grow up and over pergolas or whatever it might be. But here, with nothing to climb on, it's just spreading along as a ground cover, and they've run little bits of it off to the fence to create areas to plant trees and shrubs. 
This is a wonderful planting. The perfume here is glorious. All of the colours work. Effortless landscaping is often the way to go. Repetition. I don't know what they'd have in here, but maybe there's a hundred Chinese star jasmines, but they just look wonderful. Beyond, you'll notice even on the nature strip, more star jasmine, and then some of those whitish flowering dietes. Now, that despite the name, they don't die, they stay alive. It's not the world's most spectacular plant, but it's good looking, nice flowers, nice sort of grassy-like growth. But you put them in and come back 20 years later, they're still gonna be looking good. And it's great to have plants like that. But wherever you look down here, there's a great human quality about it. Sure, it's stylish and structural and all those sorts of things, but you feel good being here. And when you look at the garden in relation to the building, they just work together so well. When we return, Scotty Cam looks at grinders, what you need to have and know, and also we look at the very best varieties of lily pillies for hedging. Like Pete, the cameraman here, is about as handy as two blokes away sick. If he got a hold of one of these things, he'd end up cutting both his legs off to be four foot short. If we don't want that, do we, champ? No. We well, you're watching Burke's Backyard, and really, if you get to the bottom line about being a home handy person, really, it's the tools that maketh the man. If you haven't got power tools, you're nowhere. What about a grinder? Hmm? For that story, it's over to Scotty Cam from Backyard Blitz. A little grinder here is a fantastic tool. If you're sick of using the old hacksaw and the elbow grease, these are a great unit. You can put a masonry blade in these, which will cut your brickwork and your concrete and things like that. But another feature of them, you can put in a diamond blade, which will cut your ceramic tiles and things like that. So they are a very handy unit. Now with these little grinders, this guard is removable and it does spin around. Always keep the guard back towards your hands because the blade will be exposed to you. Never move the guard around like that where your hands can touch the blade. Never ever take the guard off, always keep it on there. When you are changing the blades, unplug the tool and make sure that it's switched off at the power because the switches are quite sensitive and they can be knocked on. Now this big guy here is called the Widowmaker. That's what we like to call it. If somebody gets a hold of one of these that uh, doesn't know what they're doing, like Pete the cameraman here is about as handy as two blokes away sick. If he got a hold of one of these things, he'd end up cutting both his legs off to be four foot short. If we don't want that, do we, champ? No, we don't. You really need to have a firm grip on these guys, and there's no mucking around when they're turned on. They shoot off when you're cutting metal some very hot sparks. Make sure no one's behind you. It's essential to have the ear wear on because they are extremely noisy. And you also obviously have to have the eyewear on because they do shoot off these sparks. Keep the tool away from you because it does shoot back the sparks and you don't want them going on to you continuously. They will eventually wear out your clothes, which has happened before. And uh, I've also seen a flannelette shirt go up in flames from them because of the sparks continually going. So very important to send the waste product that's coming off your job away from you and always have a firm grip. And once again, keep them away from the kiddies because they plug them in and turn them on, arm off very easily. Without doubt, lily pillies are the most popular plant in Australia today for hedging and for topiary. Fantastic plants, vigorous, they don't tend to die. They grow so easily you can just clip them into virtually any shape you want. That's the good news. Bad news is there are stunning numbers of varieties and they are hopelessly confused. Now look, I don't claim to know how to sort them all out because really nobody's done it. But we're going to have a little bit of a lash at it today. Firstly, we'll look at the major groupings. Now, the largest group of all of them, I suppose, are a group called Syzygium australia. If you're wondering what a Syzygy is, it's a, a group of stars up in the heavens. I just thought I'd throw that in for some trivia. But this one is called Australi, more or less sort of meaning in relation to Australia, southern land. And there's all sorts of varieties, Aussie Boomer and Blaze and Bush Christmas and Aussie Copper, stacks of them. So that's your big group. Then there's this one. These two here are a particular group called Syzygium paniculatum. Now in the nursery industry they've been calling half the Australis paniculatum and vice versa, so it's terribly confusing. There's one called Lilliput, there's another one here called Beach Ball. So that is paniculatum. Then 
There's this one, Syzygium lamanii. This is the wild form of it. Beautiful thing, a rather larger one, gorgeous tree. And that's a dwarf form of it, supposed to only grow one to two metres, although I suppose we'll tell in time, called Royal Flame. Then there's this one, Syzygium wilsonii, which has uh, lovely new growth and beautiful flowers, but rather tropical. And they hybridise this to that lumanii variety, and they produce this one called Cascade. Now, lastly, there's another group that aren't even Syzygiums, they're Acminas. Aren't these dreadful names? These are they here. Acminas are wonderful in that they don't get a lot of the pest problems that the other lily pillies get. This is one called the, well, if you like, rheophytic form or variety minor. And this is a dwarf form of that called Hedgemaster. And this is just one of it called Hot Flush that has the red new growth. Now, it's a lot, I know. So what we're going to do now is try and pull out the ones that we think are better. Because the problem is that these two groups, Paniculatum and Australi, get terribly worried by psyllids. Mitch, just come over here and I'll show you. Pulling a little bit off the plant. Now, this is what I'm talking about. You're buying these as foliage plants, and there's tiny little insects related to cicadas. They live in the back here, and they cause this dimpling. And this looks horrible. Now, most of these plants in the Australi and the Paniculatum group are terribly worried by this. And if they're worried, you will be too, because they don't look good. Now get your 6B gardening pencils out and the pad and we will try now to give our best guess of what we think might be what and is a good idea to grow. It does vary across Australia. Something that's good in one area maybe not so good in another. But anyway, here goes. We've divided them into big, medium and little. In the big lily pillies, this one, the rheophytic race of Acmena smithii, often called Acmena smithii var minor. I know that's a terrible name. It's a great plant though, it really is. It doesn't get the psyllids and all that leaf dimpling and all that. It's fantastic. Probably even better still is this one, Syzygium lamanii, the rye berry. That's just a, a straight species from the wild. Look, both of these are probably going to grow around five metres. Lovely trees, no great vices, uh, and they don't get the dimpling. Now, in the middle group, we've given you a selection of a few of them. This is bush Christmas here. Now, mm, bush Christmas is probably going to grow around about three to four metres tall. This is probably our number one pick of the middle-sized ones, and this is the, probably the main one that most people are now growing for hedging throughout Australia. It's a real cracker. It's called Elite, and that one you could grow maybe four to six metres tall. Then there's Hot Flush. Now, Hot Flush is, is very interesting. It's an Acmena again, so it doesn't get the psyllid sorts of problems. Lovely thing, it has the not red but bronzy new growth, four metres or so. This one is a variety called Aussie Southern, and this one again, four to five metres, something like that. So this whole middle sort of group, around the five metres or less mark. Now remember, the first three here, all of these Syzygiums do get a bit of that dimpling. There's nothing you can do about that. Elite may be the best of them for not getting that, but of course, Hot Flush should not ever get the leaf dimpling. So again, that's an important variety. Then to the small ones, I love this. It's one called Royal Flame. It's a dwarf variety of that Syzygium lamanii, that is the rye berry. This only grows around the two metres mark, and it's a little bit weepy, and it really is a lovely plant. Again, doesn't get the leaf dimpling and all that. Then there's two really tiny ones. Uh, there's one called Tiny Treb, and it's a beauty. It probably would be lucky to get to a metre tall, and you can see small foliage. And this one, now I've got to be honest and say, this is one of mine. I produced this one. It's called Hedgemaster, not released till... I don't know, perhaps the early to mid stages of the year 2001, but hedge master, again, around about a metre, tiny little leaves. So there's your range. You can go from very tiny, and these two would be great for parterre hedges and low hedges up to a metre or so, right through to the biggest stuff. And really, lily pillies are lovely. If you're really confused, write in for the fact sheet or access it on the internet, and you'll be able to get our recommended varieties. But do remember, any of these Syzygium australi varieties or paniculatum will get leaf dimpling and it's not lovely but there are fabulous lily peas i believe for australian gardens they are by far the best plant for topiary or hedging when we return tonight's celebrity gardeners s2s that is sharon and christine muscat sister to sister this is quite tragic. You're terrified in front of a camera. Yeah. Oh, we're very shy and we're not very talkative, so you'll have to excuse us. <laughs> personalities. I don't know. We just don't stop talking and laughing. and You're just another person to us, you know. You're just hanging out with yeah. us. Yeah. 
Well, you're watching Burke's Backyard. What do you know about Malta? Well, the whole country got the St George Cross during World War II, and there are more Maltese living in Australia than there are in Malta. And two of them that are our celebrity gardeners tonight are incredibly impressive young people. That is Christine and Sharon Muscat. They are S2S, sister to sister. Amazingly talented singers, extraordinary. And their music is every bit, in my opinion, as appealing to young people as it is to older people and working with them. Well, by the end of the day, my head was spinning. It's like being in a barrel of monkeys. Now listen, for everyone that's at home, because you don't identify your names by your act, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, do the job. Okay, I'm Chris. And I'm Sharon. And we're sister, sister to sister. 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 Yeah. And you, re you really are sisters? Yes, yes definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's all true. She's the younger one, I'm the older one, even though it probably looks like the opposite way she around. She had her birthday last week, she's 20 now. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. Isn't that good? It's a, it's a 20 and 17? No, 16. I'll be 17 in August. 17 in August. And you've already travelled the world. Sure and... have. It's all a bit crazy. It's a bit scary, actually, because I look back at what we've done like, all this year. Mm. It's quite scary, the places we've been, and it's just gone so quickly. I was just looking at your eyes, Mitch. Come, those uh, eyes! They're not real! I'm <laughs> <laughs> not meant to say that. You're meant to say beautiful she eyes. Bought them beautiful. For, how much did you buy them for? I didn't buy them. <laughs> you my, didn't my, I got them for my father. My father's well, got well, them. Well, no, 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 that's fake. This is real. These oh. are real eyes. <laughs> well, nice to meet you guys. Thanks for looking at They're real. <laughs> Over here is our uncle Sam. This is his garden, and this is his house, and we actually live here. And um, yeah. So Sam, <laughs> you, I was going to say Sam must be. He's got to have sucker written all over him. He's got absolutely, all these families absolutely, living absolutely, here. Absolutely, yeah. But we enjoy. He loves it. it. As you can see, I keep changing things yeah. simply by the season, and. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I enjoy it. I do. It yeah. relaxes me. Uh, it's got that lot. tropical rainforest look, which I suppose you'd never get back home in Malta. No, you wouldn't. Backyard. There's no trees in Malta. Um, There's no trees in Malta. What country trees. you come from? <laughs> no, I didn't think that. There's very few trees There's in, in a, a lot yeah, of the Mediterranean. That's what I no, mean. there is mm. trees in no, Malta. Like <laughs> No lot. No lot. No birds, no trees. You can say eyes. I mean, you just... You know, turn around and show it on the radio mic. It's The garden's gorgeous and the pool's gorgeous, so it gives us time to In just summer, chill out. In summer, we just chill out and home. swim and barbecues, and I just had my 20th right here. This is our okay. birthday party scene two days ago. Just while, while we are, everybody, the tattoo, the new tat. Oh, my tattoo. Yay. That is it. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Oh, I get to show my tattoo on telly. Oh, no. You must be very proud of Sharon. Extremely Christine. proud of him, yes. The voices that they have is, is always, always there. Uh, you can always, Thanks, Uncle Sam. You can always tell that there's something about these two girls. And, and here we are. Oh, really? Not. You're messy. She's I messy. You I, get picked on. I have to clean her room. No, I do the bed. She's messy. You. She never does the gardens, never does anything. She's messy. When do you get down on your hands and knees and start cleaning the garden? All the time. I was going to say a word. <laughs> <laughs> I give up. And she steals dresses. And she steals dresses. Yeah, we share each other's clothes, but I think um, that's a sister thing, though. That, that's accepted. I can do it. Oh, is it. These are all just necklaces and belly chains and, like, belts, belts and... It's all crazy. This is my favourite dress. This is my Versace dress. I got this in Italy. I love this. Uh, yeah, but this diesel jacket's nice. better. It's a bit more casual. Come on. I it's, not so, it's, it's not so, you know, fake eyes, fake like dress that. and, you know... Ah! Uh, so gonna pop it. <laughs> I think this is you. You think it's me? Yeah, yeah I think that's you. Yeah. Oh, that's not too bad. It's a bit small. I won't get mad cow disease or something. No, I promise. No, okay. I want to put the wig on you, can I? Oh yeah, yeah, the wig, the wig. All right, just once. I'm prepared but to do that. But it's like three quarter. But you gotta put the hat on top of you, on top of the wig. Wait, just leave it like that, and then put the hat on top. That's very Hang sexy. On. Wait. Oh, yeah. now yeah. yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I can just see you two. 
Vicious. doing the comedy hour. <laughs> I, I, the comedy hour. I can see it now. You, Why not? I think, you know, we're so interested in doing a lot of things and we love acting and obviously It'd singing and writing songs, producing songs, doing radio and I can see us doing other things like that down the track too, but maybe not comedy. I don't think we're that funny. No, we're not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> we oh, I don't know. <laughs> and sometimes we fight every family does. Oh yeah, but that can't change our love. Okay, ready everyone? Who, who do you think this is? Ready? Sister. No, we don't have another no, sister. This is our mummy. Our mum. Our mum. Our dad. Our dad's in the background. He's had he's far fighting. too much press lately, so he's not allowed in. Yeah, but he's not allowed. But mum was like, I don't want to get in front of the camera. I don't want to get in front of the camera. I we said, forced her. Yeah, right. Yeah, she yeah. loves it, don't you, mum? Oh yeah. <laughs> I was saying before, you know, you were planning what song you were going to sing for everyone. I and so I was afraid. I was <laughs> petrified. Give me your heart, you No, mum doesn't mum really sing. She I tries, don't sing. but she doesn't really sing. I try. What do you do, mum? Yeah, what do you do, mum? You look after our clothes. I, I do your washing. She's I do your ironing. The, the mother. Yeah, well, yeah. She's our ha thing. she's our roadie housewife, aren't you, mum? Well, yeah. She she looks after our clothes. I like that. Grace, you and, and Joe are so supportive that you had your own business. You've now yeah. got rid of all that, so you can support the girls. Well, what did you used to do? We, used, we had a deli in Mary Ann. Deli cafe. A deli I used cafe. To, I used to mop the floors, didn't I? And help me spot salami. We had that for seven years, which really um, was good for us. But um, then the opportunity came and um, we had to move to Melbourne. And so you think, you know, okay, I've only got these two girls. That's my life. These are, you know, this is my life. And I think any mother would do the same thing. And but we do know that we're very lucky and there's lots of kids out there, especially in this country, that are just as talented as us. That's why I say, don't ever say you can't do anything because if we can do it two little chicks from from you know Penrith, downtown st Clair, western suburbs of sydney if we can be three and seven years old and say i want to be a singer and here we are now anyone can do it and i strongly say that and it's coming straight from my heart that you can do it you know <laughs> kind of the what do you ambassadors, call it? ambassadors for well, faces of the 40 hour famine world vision for this year so we're a bit excited about that and um this is the song that we kind of gave to world vision and said you know um we'd like you guys yeah. to use this as just kind of like a present from us a little yeah. little called, something for the kids and it's whatever, called so. count on me and it's basically just us and world vision asking can we count on you to help out the kids so so we may well check it out for you now you can count on me seen a fair bit of the world already, yeah. isn't they? I'm tempted ever to live anywhere else? Or? Well, see, because of what we're doing right now, we're always moving. And that's why we're living with our uncle now, because we're moving around so much. There's no point in just being in a hotel. We may as well be with our family. Mm. So um, we're actually going to America after Asia. We're riding, you know, with loads of people there and in the UK. So we're kind of moving a lot now. But I do know very much that, you know, I want to be in Australia as much as I can. But I'm going to go where the music is. Even when it's breaking Coming up next, Jackie French is going to show you how to make lemonade. And I want you in. <laughs> You're so in. I'm hip, am I? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're very impressed. You're looking great. Best we've ever seen you look. Yeah? What do you think? Oh, yeah, baby. Well, you're watching Burke's Backyard. It's now time for Jackie French. And look, we've had a lot of complaints, a lot of letters in saying that poor Brian is never allowed to speak. Well, we've let him say a few words just for you tonight. Turn it down! Do any of you remember the good old days when kids were seen and not heard? And wives worked in the kitchen in their aprons and made good things for their husbands. 
your family has got a hankering for old-fashioned things, well, maybe you could indulge them, just a little, with good old-fashioned lemonade. <laughs> okay, you up, turn it off. <laughs> now, go pick some lemons. This is really delicious stuff. Bring four cups of white sugar and two cups of water to the boil. Now simmer it for five minutes, then add two cups of fresh lemon juice, two teaspoons of citric acid, two teaspoons of tartaric acid. Bring the whole lot to the boil again, take off the heat and funnel it into sterilized bottles. When you want to make it, just Put a bit in a glass and top it up with water. Lovely. Or if you want to make genuine fizzy lemonade, just put some ice in, put some mint in. There we are. Bung a nice bit into a jug and top it up with soda water. Aha. <laughs> oh, lovely stuff. Look at it. Absolutely beautiful. All right. Okay. Off we go. Here we are, darling. You were joking, weren't you, about kids being seen and not heard and them in the kitchen? <laughs> darling? <laughs> darling? There's only <laughs> one thing to do at a time like this. Take all his feet. No. <laughs> 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 Well, I suspect Brian has a great time when he's doing that filming. Now, if you want details on that recipe or anything else from tonight's show, you can access it right now on the internet or write in for a free fact sheet. All you do is mark on the back of your envelope the segment that you're interested in and address it to Burke's Backyard, P.O. Box 929 Willoughby, New South Wales 2068. And don't forget to include a business-sized, stamped, self-addressed envelope. Now, on next week's show, we're going to road test the main coon cat. Not a lot of these around, but they're certainly a pretty looking cat. And we're visiting with our celebrity gardeners, the Negus family. That is George Negus, Kirsty Coburn, and their boy, of course, Serge Coburn, who is starring with Paul Hogan in the new Crocodile Dundee 3. So it should be a fantastic show, and it will be coming to you from Melbourne's International Flower and Garden Show, which is the premier flower and garden show in Australia. So it should be a huge show next week. Hope you enjoyed this week's show. See you all again next week. Hooroo. Next on Nine, from Burke's Backyard to the Garden of Death, it's our brand new Midsummer Murders mystery, a Friday movie thriller starring John Nettles, Daniel Casey and Jane Wymark. Maybe we should just do this. Put the belt on like we'll that. we just put this on top like that. Yeah. Um, I hope, I hope Father O'Brien isn't watching. <laughs> <laughs> show, him belt, show him your new belt. <laughs> Pink and red don't really go, Sherry. You make it look like a freak. <laughs> I think he's doing well enough on his own. Yes, and then before... This program proudly brought to you by Cabots, who are also proud to bring you beautiful timber decking, outdoor furniture, 